we're going to the city of military glory and the homeland of the traditional Ukrainian halushki. Welcome to Poltava. Poltava is a city of creativity and military glory. Oh, Rob! Hi, how are you doing? Hello, I'm, I'm, you know me, full of life, full oh. of metal, uh, and full of myself. So we're all back to normal again. I'm oh, wonderful. Well, would you like to explore the city of Poltava? I would love to, please. Help oh, me down these stairs. Of course. Be gentle, be gentle. The city of Poltava is more than a thousand years old, but it became known relatively recently. 300 years ago, Europe was engulfed in the northern war between Sweden and the Russian Empire, part of which was Ukraine at the time. But what does Poltava have to do with it? It was Poltava that stood in the way of King Charles XII when he went to Moscow through Ukraine. For three months, Swedish troops besieged the small city, but the brave Poltava residents held the defense. They waited for the 60,000 Russian reinforcements army led by Peter I, and a decisive battle took place near Poltava. The Round Square is the heart of Poltava. It was built on the 100th anniversary of the victory against the Swedish troops uh, during the Battle of Poltava. And the locals call it the sunny one because if you look at this park from the sky, it looks like eight sun rays. Poltava was also especially important during the Second World War as well. Battle for the Dnipro, which is considered one of the breaking points in the war, took place right here. Well, it is indeed a city of military glory. We are in the Museum of Long Range and Strategic Aviation. What does that mean? Um, well, they're not your ordinary military aircraft. They are large bombers capable of flying deep into enemy territory. Vamos! <laughs> That's very dis... Oh. Let's get, I'd say we get out of here now. We press something wrong. Press something wrong. So we were just all up inside the world's largest serial produced bomber, the TU-160. And we're here with Victor, who is a tour guide at the museum. Can you tell us a little bit more about this gigantic plane? This is uh, a very unique aircraft. This is basically, in the first place, this is the only one aircraft which you can see on display anywhere in the whole world. Oh, wow. What a pleasure. Moreover, this is the most powerful. Uh, the heaviest and the fastest strategic bomber aircraft in the whole world. Even today, you won't find a similar aircraft anywhere else. Wow, I, I guess it doesn't fly anymore. Uh, un unfortunately not, but still, <laughs> yeah. it used to fly combat missions, so this aircraft was designed to carry nuclear payload. It could carry around a 200 kiloton nuclear payload, only one. That's for wow. your understanding, for example, uh, in 1945, Americans dropped only 20 or 15 kilonewton nuclear bomb in Japan. Yeah. Wow. So this is that. So why why doesn't it fly anymore? Um, well, after Ukraine became non-nuclear state, uh, Ukraine had to uh, get rid of uh, any type of uh, nuclear weapon as well as the means of its delivery. How many how many pilots were needed? Obviously, would you need two? So two for the flying and then two for the. Well, this aircraft, uh, though it, it is too big, basically for our understanding how this thing can fly in general, right? <laughs> yeah. But but uh, this aircraft could be easily easily controlled by anyone because this aircraft was uh, used the so-called fly-by-wire control system. So it uses a computer on board that actually controls the aircraft. Uh, the two pilots uh, who control this aircraft yeah. with the help of a uh, stick, control yeah. stick, so uh, they just like uh, give some kind of a commands to the computer. Oh. Uh, so where they want to fly. So that's why this aircraft is very easy to be controlled. Like, yeah. for example, modern passenger jets. So they also use the fly-by-wire control. Oh, OK, because it's still quite a modern aircraft, really.
So guys, now we are in, in the cockpit of the bear. Uh, it's, it's very spacious, by the way, uh, since like it took uh, more crew member to operate this type of the aircraft. This version of this aircraft was designed in the late 1970s, and only this version uh, of, this, of the T-95 uh, appeared to have a toilet for the crew members. Wait, thank, so how would God. they all the do previous, it all, all the previous version didn't have such a uh, luxury item like a toilet. Oh, is that that yeah, there? Yes, exactly. That's this the is toilet. the toilet for the crew members. So, uh, speaking about like the crew members, so, uh, this was the seat for the captain. So he yeah. was in charge of the crew. He was like uh, the chief mm -hmm. of any combat mission. Yeah. Next okay. to him, to the right, was sitting like his uh, second pilot. And uh, on, like on your seat, uh, there was like a communication officer. Yeah. Uh, here was the seat for the for the flight engineer. Over there, you can also see like two seats uh, for the um, navigation officer, which is uh, in front of us. And also next to him to the right, there was the seat for the uh, offensive weapon. And would it, would, it, would it always be the same team that would do it or would it change? Based, yes, of course. They, uh, so like different uh, teams could be involved in like in different military operations since like they had to have a rest after the combat mission. Oh, yeah, could be long. So for example, this type of aircraft was once tested in a very long mission, uh, which flew like uh, 17,000 kilometers, of course, was, was like in-flight refueling, but still they covered around 30,000 kilometers. They, they started from the Uzin Air Base, which is close to Kiev, and they flew around the Soviet Union. They covered like around 30,000 kilometers and then landed here. Oh, wow. So uh, I'm sort of like landed in, like in Moscow. So it, 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 was, it was just to show uh, the Western world that we also have yeah, we a similar aircraft. Yeah. yeah. Let's have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Whoa! This, this is like a, a workout. Oh! <laughs> you control the thing! Oh my god! We're in the wacky thing! Well, thank you very much, Victor, for showing us around. It's been really interesting. Thanks for letting us inside your bomber. It's been fascinating, really insightful stuff. Yeah, we've learned a lot, so thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. The refined white Altanka is considered the most popular place in Poltava. This magnificent structure has a horseshoe shape, and that's not a coincidence. According to the stories, in this exact place, the Poltava blacksmith shot the horse of Peter I. The horse lost its horseshoe in the decisive Battle of Poltava during the Northern War. And you know what they say about a horse with a big horseshoe. But enough about the wars. Poltava is also a creative city. The famous Ukrainian writer Ivan Kotoyarevsky was born here, and Nikolai Gogol, and the doctor Nikolai Sklifosovsky both lived here. You'd think the main symbol of the city would be a monument to one of them. It's not. It's a traditional signature dish of the Poltava region called halushka. In Poltava, there is even a wedding tradition associated with this monument. On the wedding day, the bride and the groom are photographed, taking their place in the bowl of the spoon and next to it. The one who is the first to take the spoon will be the head of the new family. Poltava is a 20-minute city, so let's test this hypothesis. Go! Why 20, though? The pedestrian centre and the concentration of all institutions there saves commuters some time. This city allows you to get to any point within 20 minutes. Although, according to the people of Poltava, the residents are often late for the same 15 to 20 minutes that they save. Bingo! We're on time, exactly 20 minutes.
We are here at Kimura, a dumplings manufacturer. And Rob, I have a special surprise for you inside. You do? I do. I need some comfort food right now, to be honest. So, should we go in? Yes, let me get the door yeah, for you. please do. Polite. Now we are in a Halushka masterclass. Yeah, with our dumpling dynamo, Dennis. Hello. Good afternoon. Dobrodnia. Welcome to the glorious city of Poltava. As they say, Poltava is known for what? Dumplings, right? What is a dumpling even made of? Dumplings are made of flour. Now we will find out where the flour comes from. Okay, oh, well. is this triggering you? <laughs> what is this? Getting PTSD. <laughs> okay. PTSD. Yeah. What's this stone? It's called a millstone. It's basically a mini mill which is used to turn grain into flour. Today you will learn how to make flour yourself. That's how they started grinding. Oh, it's cool. oh, coming out the end. Oh. Look at this. Wow. It seems like a very roundabout way to get flour. Yeah, come on. Right. That's what I'll do. Just hold it there. You know exactly what you've got to do. Push it, push it right in there. Okay. Can you go any way or is it a specific way? No. Too hard? No. Too tough. He's going to hold it down for you. So oh! You can... Okay, thanks. That's right, use two hands. You can't do this. I mean, I, mean, I can. I've been in a hotel huh? room on my own with one arm. I can do this. We're getting faster now. I want to go now. But that's not all. You see, it's a rough grind. It needs more. It's, oh, it's, it's not dr uh, fluffy enough. Never Pull it back in. We take it and put it here again. Oh, so we do it again. It's got to be... And we do so several times. All right, now you've loosened the goods. Let me have a go. You have to hold the top. Yes. Situation. Yeah. Can you we'll check? Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. Oh, this is looking more. Exercise I needed before I broke my shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A couple of dumplings there. Oh. Right. Yeah, keep going. Oh. Just shake it and then. Quite a strenuous process, the old um, flour making, isn't it? Yeah, well, nowadays you can just buy it from a shop. This is. Oh, no, yeah. This it's is, the people, future. people are a lot stronger. They didn't break the collarbones after one fall. I'm getting a lot of abuse for someone who is in a lot of pain. <laughs> This is yeah, the good stuff, this baby. Is, this is made Pablo, Pablo. from the same thing. Now it is modern. This is how a flower looks. But previously, we used the method you just saw. And now we start mixing manually. So do it. Yeah, that's right. Mix it very okay. thoroughly. All right, we need 150 grams of flour using 100 grams of kefir. Put it all in. We pour everything. We do it manually again. We mix. Oh, God. Ah. Oh. Oh. Boom, boom, boom. 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 Do you know how to do it? Right. No. No, no. There is a rim. No. We tie a gauze cloth under this rim. Why are you acting like you know what's up? happening? Oh, okay. Yeah, like a drum. Like a drum. Yeah. Yes, yeah, like a drum with no noise. So they cooked with steam then? Oh, it's looking like it's ready. It's steaming. Oh. On. Touch the boiling water. Yeah. And now we take dumplings. Boom, boom, boom. And yeah. lay them out. Now we're cooking with steam. And cover them all like this with a lid. Your dumplings are ready and it's time to fill them up. Dumplings should be filled. This is just an empty dough now. What can you fill them with? You can use vegetables, mushrooms, or meat. Traditional dressings are fried onions or cracklings, fried lard.
The main thing is sour cream. Dumplings are tastier with sour cream. You can fill them up yourself, then you can taste. Please. There we go. Thank you. Oh. So much no harm. These are the ones that you can we taste, need, then you can make even more filling. I mean, I think for me, this is very chewy and quite quite filling so I feel like you do need like some sour cream with it but I'm proud of myself for making it yeah no it's good it's there's not a lot of flavor to the balls but obviously that's why you add all the, the condiment um, and yeah this is delicious I'm a big fan of pig fat so I couldn't be happier like a Ukrainian you can eat it all day and maybe you'll turn into one Thank you very much on this uh, little journey. Um, they are delicious, it's been fun. Um, and now let's enjoy all these little treats. Yeah. Так що завжди раді бачити вас в Полтаві. To remember the day you visited us. I want to give you our Ukrainian lucky charm. A souvenir that you should take home. This is a Matanka doll. It is like an angel. It will protect you from all sorts of problems and troubles. It will always be with you as a guardian. This will protect you, and you will remember us. Oh, brilliant! Thank you. you. Thank 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 you. One of the local traditional arts of Poltava residents is real dolls. Seemingly cute baby toys, but why don't they have faces? Because the doll served as a talisman. Ukrainians believe that without a face, a thing remained inanimate, so it could take on all the illnesses and misfortunes of its owner. Hi, hi. Hello! Oh, first day out of the old hospital, and we got to sample the treats of Poltava. Did you enjoy it? I did, I did. I enjoyed this morning with the planes. Yes, Victor, lovely chap, lovely yeah. guy, full of knowledge, absolutely loves planes. Yeah, and I did, it was just interesting to see what was inside, like a war plane. There's a lot of buttons. Um... Too many buttons, if you ask me. You need one. Go and bomb. And bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and the food, I really enjoyed that as well. That's probably my highlight of the day with Dennis making the little dumpling. Dumpling Dennis. Dumpling Dennis. He loved it, didn't he? He looked a little bit like a dumpling, but he um, he yeah, he was really nice. That was really insightful. I'm very much full of dumplings now. I mean, I could I could maybe have a day off. A day off from dumplings. dumplings. But it was amazing to see how much you can do with that. Like there was different ones, like a dessert with the chocolate. That was so good. Oh, delicious. Yeah, it was a, it's a, a versatile dish. A versatile dish. Versatile dish. And now I'd highly recommend. Poltava, and definitely if you like cooking. There have been no real bad points today. Um, odd that I didn't get a gift. Yeah, I felt Dennis. bad because he was like, guys, come here, I've got something for you. For you, it was a hug that nearly broke your other collarbone. Yeah. Um, and for me, it was like a little Motanka doll. But I I'm wondering whether it's normal to give women gifts, but not men. Men like dolls too, okay? <laughs> Hashtag men like dolls. Yeah. But I think it's been a fun day. You know, I don't really think it's been, it's been relaxed. I haven't had to do anything yes. strenuous, which has been good. Uh, so all in all, 10 out of 10. Well, I, I fancy a beer. You fancy a beer? I fancy some food that isn't dumplings, but yeah. maybe Verena K again. Okay, let's go. Enjoy. Okay.